Hey everyone, we're Group 6 and we're going to give our presentation on the League of Legends Live Evaluator project that we worked on over the course of the fall semester for the Big Data Analytics course. So to start off, our uh, as we know, the massive multiplayer game League of Legends is really popular and has got over 4 million people playing it. And while really popular games online like chess have recently been making a big uh, mark in the streaming platform, and have been used by many chess streamers to analyze and improve their game. We haven't seen this type of a game in live, uh, in real time, happening in a standard game for something like League of Legends or any other massive multiplayer online game in real time. So we're actually trying to attempt this task ourselves using our project, which acts as a web tool that can allow real time uh, analysis of a game along with predictions through deep learning. We've had also shown a simple pipeline of our project in this slide. So when we've done a quick literature review, we saw, saw that most other projects which have been used in this game, since it's a pretty popular game, have been focused on either pre-game prediction, using uh, specific characters of a game and predicting it based on character matchups, or predictions which basically do an analysis of a specific game. However, we haven't seen any work which has worked with live video games like in real time while also being used in a general setting, de not dependent on the player's history. So we've attempted this task ourselves in this project by making use of uh, a simple web tool, which is able to interface with our project and give predictions along with analysis in real time. So the main novelty of our project is, first of all, we have made use of a large data set that satisfies the three Vs of uh, big data uh, by leveraging the Riot API in order to get over 17,000 games. Uh, along with that, we've also made sure that our project does live analysis I mentioned earlier as compared to previous work. And our results with our deep learning model predictions have also been pretty good, having a um, accuracy of around 83.7% for games which average around 20 to 30 minutes in length. For the Kego website, uh, Kego data set, it concludes competitive games from 2015 to 2017, which has uh, 6.4K games in it. For collecting data from the right API, we first gathered 10K match IDs, which each of them will give us a JSON file from the API. To easily run through all 10K match IDs, we use the Python request command. For live data, collecting the data lively will request the game to run locally because it is based on CURL, so we can fetch the data of the live game from the local server. <laughs> to pre-process the data, we selected features that we want to put into training, uh, the model and predicting. Basically, these features are differences of objectives that each team declared, such as barons, dragons, and etc. with the goal difference. <laughs> For uh, for the JSON file we get from the right API, we collect what happens in game for each minute, record it and write it uh, into a panda data frame, like uh, what is shown in the picture at the top. Then we can get the data from the Kego and the right API to get a data set around uh, 16, 16K in size. For the live data we get from the local server, we did it in the same style. We, but we are now able to get a goal difference from the live data. After finishing the pre-process of this data, data come from these two ways are written into CSV file and uploaded to the GCP bucket. And for the live data, it will be uploaded to the GCP bucket each minute while we run the script. So all in all, uh, these data satis satisfy the uh, volume and the velocity in the 3Ds. So along with this, we've also done a simple data analysis for our project where we basically just uh, made a simple correlation heat map to see the relationship between the different features we've considered. While the Riot API allows us to make use of many different features like team skills, abilities, and so on, we've chosen to just make use of these seven features, mainly the gold diff, dragon diff, baron diff, tower diff, and so on. And through these selected features, we've gotten an accuracy of around 83.7%, which we elaborate more on it in our report. And we'll now get into the deep learning part of our project. For the deep learning part, we experimented with quite a few different uh, architectures, but found the best performance for our model using a sequential model like an RNN, which does make sense since we're making use of time series data. And for the loss function for our project, we, for our deep learning model, we used a simple cross entropy and the pipeline is shown in the, in the slide as well, along with a simple plot of our loss function. We do leverage techniques like early stopping to make sure we have the best performance for the model. 
So here we've got a simple website front end as well for our uh, project, which just shows like the text box for the match ID, the submit button. And this is basically what the front end of our project is supposed to look like, where we can enter the match ID and or choose to analyze a live game instead. And we also have the front end for our um, match ID once we've entered it. We are able to analyze it either through a, a line graph for the goal difference and the kill difference, the winning rate bar, the slider to select the timestamps, the button, force bubble chart, which basically shows the differences between the dragon skilled, the baron skilled, herald skills, and so on in lifetime, and so on. And similarly for the live data. After this, we've got the integration of our project. So since we are making use of these web pages in JavaScript, we will need to form some form of interface between our Python code, which basically involves the Riot API and taking the data and interfacing with the GCP bucket, as well as the JavaScript front end to make sure we get the data and send the data accordingly. So we make use of HTTP methods for this, which we can get when we make use of the Flask API for our application to do get and post methods. And we've also made use of Jinja in order to uh, further communicate between our HTML and our uh, Python files, which we elaborate more on in the report. And this is a simple uh, version of our system architecture, which shows how all of our different files interact with each other. Where server.py also take the uh, functions we've written for our data.py and models.py files. And finally, we also want to show a simple demo of our project. So in this demo, as shown earlier, this is what our front end looks like, where we can enter recorded matches, where we just enter a simple match ID like so. Once we do that, the data gets uploaded to our Google Cloud storage bucket, and then we can analyze the data for a game that's already been completed. So we can select any time frame we want and notice how in the different time frame what our deep learning model predictions are, what our kill difference and goal difference look like, and the difference in the two teams. We can see that the red team has killed one dragon more than the blue team and also destroyed one tower more and one herald more. So we can also press the next button to just go to the next four time steps immediately where we each time step basically refers to a minute here. And yeah, our front end is also done as shown in the slides. And we can similarly do this even for live data. So for live data, we also need to run the live stream.ipy notebook in our GitHub and then press the live evaluation. And we've got this setup over here. In order to evaluate a live game, it, we will require more time than just the 10 minutes provided. So we have included a GitHub, a YouTube link in our GitHub for an entire game. And the game uh, which we've got, we're also going to show a few key moments from it over here, where we are able to see the data being uploaded for a live game on our GCP bucket exactly every minute, as shown over here. And we're also able to see moments like over here, where we notice that if we look just a minute behind, you'll see the ice dragon has been uh, there's been a dragon that's been killed in league of legends over here and one minute later if we look at our bubble chart we will notice the dragon appear in this chart every time we press the live button so we're certain that our project does work over here yeah we can see the dragon showing up over here and updating our kill difference and similarly even if we move to other time steps we can see differences like the inhibitor difference kill difference tower difference difference, error difference, predictions from our model, all happening in real time. And you can, of course, watch the YouTube link on your own as well to analyze one full game. And yeah, that's basically the end of our project. If we go to our conclusions also really quick, we believe that this project definitely has a lot of business value, where we're able to work with uh, deep learning models to both improve and help, help uh, existing League of Legends professional players analyze and improve key moments in the game, while also allowing streamers and casual viewers to follow a game that has so much going on to make it less daunting for a new player to join in. So it can definitely be a useful uh, tool for both aspects, including tournaments. And, and for future work, we can definitely find ways to improve this as well, like having even more uh, different game lengths for our data and making sure that our deep learning model is able to work on that, making our deep learning model more uh, real time and more lightweight by either making use of pruning methods or tensor RT and also deploying it in a global uh, platform where multiple people can make use of it in an easier UI is certainly something we could work on as well. That's basically the end of our presentation, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed working on it.